Conceptually, the site planning process is fairly straightforward. The site to be developed is identified. Resource constraints and opportunities are also identified. Users and stakeholders are surveyed. And programs and activities to be delivered are identified. All of these factors are analyzed to develop a plan that delivers the desired program and activities for users. There is general agreement regarding the site development process. Several sources were reviewed in determining the model used. The site planning process model used is a synthesis of these sources. The site planning process is very flexible. The main entrance facility report is the site plan for the main entrance of Brookside Gardens. The plan is tailored to the specific site. Most of the survey and inventory phase was conducted as part of the master planning process. Its final product is a blueprint used to reconstruct the main entrance. The first step is the identification of the site and its boundaries. Based on projected sources of costs and revenues, the master plan for Brookside Gardens identified 15 phases for development. The phases were prioritized and the main entrance received the highest priority. Additional funds became available, enabling both phase one and two to be completed simultaneously. The survey or inventory phase consists of three phases. First is an inventory of the resource to determine its capabilities. Second are the external factors affecting the site, including potential users and markets. Third are the program relationships, including the client's objectives or the agency's mission and objectives regarding the use of the site. First is the on-site inventory. Generally, the on-site inventory is divided into cultural, physical, and biological factors. It is a logical classification. Cultural factors relate to human activities and impacts. It includes assessing buildings, utilities, boundaries, historical and archeological features, and other factors. Often the inventory of the cultural, physical, and biological factors is an in-depth assessment worthy of its own study. Physical features include the assessment of topography, hydrology, wetlands, and geology and soils. Biological factors focus on the assessment of the flora, fauna, and endangered species. Management by avoidance is the identification of areas that may require extensive permitting or that may slow down construction. Areas that may be avoided include wetlands, endangered species, and historical and archeological sites. In the park setting, the assessment of these three factors filters upward and influences key program relationships that depend on the natural features. For Brookside Gardens, the inventory re represented constraints and opportunities. The external environment includes potential user groups, stakeholders, the competition, and bordering land uses. Brookside Gardens borders Wheaton Regional Park, which essentially extends its forested area. Since school groups are a potential user group, parking needs to accommodate buses. The development of the site or facility is program driven. Program is determined by the client's or agency's objectives and mission. In park and natural areas, the program's physical and biological features bubble up to determine programming opportunities. Programmatically, at Brookside Gardens, there are two main program areas. There are support services, including maintenance and propagation facilities. Second are visitor services, which include the conservatory, visitor center, and gardens. The analysis phase seeks to integrate the relationships identified during the survey phase. It begins to make 
conclusions about these relationships and how they will affect the final design. The analysis phase is subdivided into two subgroups. Design concepts focuses on the relationship between major elements. Often bubble diagrams are used. Site analysis focuses on constraints and problems and opportunities identified within the site. For Brookside Gardens, the analysis phase provides the opportunity to correct several design flaws with the entrance and to integrate the thematic transition into the gardens. The thematic transition emphasizes its popular program, Wings of Fancy. Correcting design flaws included the unattractive deer fencing, parking alongside the road and shoulder, and drainage issues. The final plan is a detailed plan that identifies all the major features and their location. It synthesizes the elements in the survey and analysis phases into a plan designed to deliver the desired experience. It is the culmination of the planning process. It includes the construction plans and, if needed, the blueprints. In summary, the site development process is fairly straightforward. The site is identified. It is surveyed in terms of its resource capabilities and opportunities, external environment, and program opportunities. These factors are analyzed to identify relationships between major elements and to begin making conclusions and decisions regarding the final plan. The final plan is the synthesis of the process and may include construction blueprints. The site development process is foundational in designing the experience.